Hey, Josh, first game at Commander's Field. There's clearly a lot of excitement, new quarterback, new coach, all that. How eager are you just to get this thing started? <clears throat> Let's go. Uh, no, I'm, uh, I'm eager. I mean, it's so fun to be back. Uh, all the progress we made uh, <clears throat> since last season, I mean, think about it. New coach, uh, new GM, new, a lot of new front office people, new coaches, new players, new quarterback. Uh, I, think, I know you all toured uh, the facilities, so just a lot going on and a lot of really positive things, but ready to, ready to get going. Obviously not a, a lot of things done to the stadium here, but there was news in the past week. The city con contracted with a consultant to work on maybe getting you guys back to RFK. Can you give us an update on where things are stadium-wise? Yeah, we're working like super hard, right? I mean, it's taking up a lot of my own mind space to find our next home. But uh, And as you know, we have uh, conversations going with multiple jurisdictions and not a lot really to say about it per se, other than, you know, as you peel the onion, things get more and more detailed, more and more advanced. I mean, you're aware of some of the things going on in D.C. and the congressional support. We're uh, hoping to get the Senate to buy into that also, uh, probably after the election. Uh, so we'll have to, you know, obviously I'll leave it to you all or other pundits to pol uh, predict political uh, action. But uh, a lot of, lot of good stuff going on and very positive, but not a lot to share. Why will that be after the election for you? Why is your focus after the election? <clears throat> yeah, I just don't think – so if you look at what's happening in the Senate realistically, and now I'm really getting out of depth, there's not a lot happening, right? Everyone's focused on the election. So mm -hmm. – um, this is the kind of thing that would, that, you know, that would have to be part of a series of uh, bills that would, you know, go through in the lame duck session. So you, it's not really realistic to think that's going to happen before the election. If the RFK <clears throat> bill fails, would you commit to another legislative effort to get D.C. on the table, or would you be open to making a decision before that? Yeah, I think um, I'm hoping that we can um, get – some action before the change to the next Senate and Congress and administration, because I think that's when, you know, all bets are, I don't know. The answer is it's very hard to predict what that looks like. So ideally, um, since we have a lot of stuff lined up right now, it would happen in the lame duck session. But again, now you're really predicting the inner workings of Washington. <clears throat> how, how firm is that? People throw out the 2030 date for when you want it open. How firm is that? Um, in terms of when you, you know. Yeah, it's a, t it's a target. I think it's a realistic target. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that, again, like there's, uh, you know, a lot, there's political things that need to occur. There's land zoning and a whole lot of other things. A lot of it is not within our control. So there's no way to predict a specific date, but I think that's a reasonable uh, target. I'm curious, you know, you've been around Jaden <clears throat> a little bit. I'm curious your thoughts on him and how different the vibe is around the franchise now as opposed to last year. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm super pumped that we, uh, that Jaden is with us. Uh, I'm very excited about the pick. I mean, look, you all watch what I watch, right? I mean, you see, I mean, he hasn't been on the field all that much, but you see how we move down the field, uh, different level. Uh, plus, uh, him as a person, as a human being, as a worker, you know, earliest at the training facility, latest to leave, real teammate, real leader, real athleticism. And just a great person to be around. So I think that, um, you know, I'm very, very uh, optimistic and excited about watching him this season. <clears throat> With the changes you guys have made this offseason just to this stadium, I mean, what was your first reaction as you kind of walked through and saw all of these? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm very pumped to see uh, the new everything, right? The new suites, the new mini marts, uh, you know, the frictionless market uh, marts easier ingress and egress, all of it, um, new paint, uh, and, you know, the tunnel club, all of it, um, new food, although I, I, uh, the, the, the mac and cheese is a little much for me today, I'm not going to lie, but, uh, but on the other hand, I also uh, was wandering around planning next season's capital project, so I, see, I think we got more to do, and uh, it really makes me, ha and a strange thing, right, usually it's strange when you're Spending lots of money, but I, I really get excited about fixing the place up for our fans and, um, you know, making it. I mean, as I said, when we uh, bought the team, bought the club, you know, you're inviting people into your house and you, you don't want to have an old couch, uh, you know, finishes that are crumbling and all that. So I think that I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to make a lot of progress, you know, right now. I mean, obviously, now that the season's starting, it's all going to happen. Uh, next year, but we're going to get started for next year now. 
you've been out at, at training camp practices. What's just been your impression of the overall tone um, and sort of the, the culture that Quinn has started to build over there? Yeah, people are having fun. Uh, people are committed. They're having fun. Uh, you've got um, Dan, um, obviously, is very intense, but he's uh, building a culture of you know everyone being on the same page, having the same goals, same objectives, and he, he gamifies things. And uh, a lot of optimism, a lot of excitement. Um, you know, people, uh, you know, all the vets uh, showed up at the, uh, you know, at an optional uh, veteran uh, mini camp. You know, it doesn't really happen. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a total, it's a great vibe and a different vibe. And uh, people are just ready to get going. Josh, you've also made a lot of uh, upgrades at <clears throat> back in Ashburn at the practice facility. Um, what do you kind of see with that? In terms of building new, is that going to be – is that still tied to what goes on here with the stadium, or is that a separate one? Um, you know, look, we're just starting to do a lot of planning there. But, again, um, I'd say yes and no. I mean, obviously, we're in uh, a lot of choices to be made. And if we end up with, uh, um, you know, stadium one jurisdiction, you know, there's advantages to disadvantage and disadvantage. We're, we're, the, we're the, the DMV, right? It's just three <laughs> jurisdictions. But on the other hand um, – you know, so it's tied in some sense, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sort of um, undergoing the same process there, which is, like, what, what can we fix next? And, and obviously, uh, the player lounge uh, and, you know, and the, the old – it was great. It was harmonious for me to just watch that old – the high school turf go up from 1980-something uh, and get rolled up uh, into a ball. But there's a lot – I mean, there's an enormous amount to do there. I mean, obviously – we need to do a lot better there. So, um, you know, we're going to keep working on that as well. But um, now that the season's on, it's going to get pushed also. But you'll see just continuous improvement at both locations. And uh, in terms of the football side, obviously tons of changes with uh, from Adam on, on yep. down. Sound Jason Wright's moving <coughs> on. What other changes do you kind of see coming that you want to get to? And what sort of time? Yeah, look, I think that uh, obviously um, we're looking for a new president. Uh, and I'm, you know, that's, you know, my most important job as managing partner is um, finding the coach, finding the GM, finding the president. So the president's super important. And, um, you know, I'm really engaged in it uh, and personally leading it and going back to, uh, you know, talking to search firms and talking to candidates and all that. So, uh, and I'm obviously, you know, I obviously wish Jason did an amazing job uh, for us transitioning. You know, came in during uh, previous ownership, uh, transitioned the franchise through a very uh, difficult time period, and uh, welcomed us and did an and did and continues to do an amazing job for us. So I wish him well. Uh, so that's like the next area of focus. Good evening, Josh. Can you uh, share a little bit of, of the decision to remove the Sean Taylor Memorial and commission a new statue to be built in the future? Yeah, I, um, I think that honoring um, our alumni uh, and obviously Washington football, the glory of Washington football, three Super Bowls, we have a lot. Uh, but Sean Taylor is particularly important for obvious reasons. And I wanted to uh, make sure that he had a, a first-class uh, memorial first class exhibit um, and so we've been working closely with the Taylor family and uh, came to the decision jointly that it was probably time to look for something new and uh, we'll be considering that over the next season with the family and so I was uh, you know it's but it's part of a bigger picture right which is that in the NFL I mean if you're in NFL the the fraternity of NFL players right so if I were an NFL player, um, I would look at, um, you know, how other – we have an incredible number of um, people that were really good, and so we're trying to embrace them all, but Sean Taylor in particular. And then your, your history as a lifelong fan of the, of the team before you were an owner of the team, is any part of that <coughs> inside of you motivating you to kind of do some of these improvements that you're doing? Massively. Uh, you know, I, some of my earliest memories were um, of watching football. Uh, and walking into RFK, and I actually heard the stadium moving. I was there. I lived through all that, right? So I uh, was there when uh, we drafted uh, Daryl Green and Art Monk, and Joe Gibbs came in and went 0-6, and, and Billy Kilmer and Sonny Jerkins. I was there for all that. So um, I'm incredibly motivated to bring it back. And, um, you know, I think what I said earlier was that when um, 
you know, I've obviously invested in a lot of sports assets, um, you know, but when I um, first walked into, uh, you know, Commander Stadium, you know, I definitely was more emotional. And so this is emotional for me. You know, it's not just business. It's about the city, the franchise, the fans, and uh, doing what's right to bring the team back to where it needs to be. Mr. Harris, as you all are making upgrades to the current stadium, um, are there any other organizations you're looking at across the sports world as kind of best in class or best practices that you all are leveraging? Yeah, so every time we go to an NFL stadium or uh, a new NBA stadium or uh, a new, um, you know, I went to Tottenham Stadium, which is, you know, both, uh, you know, obviously a Premier League club and European football club, but also host NFL games. Um, you know, we are looking at everything that's going on there. And so um, I can assure you that when we you know, build our new home, uh, we will be availing ourselves of all the uh, modern um, uh, things that are going on. Like, for example, I visited SoFi. Um, I make it my own business to walk around uh, with uh, the ownership group or with the CEO or with the facilities manager and hear everything that's going on, whether it be um, – where the Clippers are playing, which is new, whether it's SoFi, whether it's, um, you know, the New Vegas Stadium, even the Premier League Club Stadiums. And so there's a lot of knowledge out there. This is a, an area of a lot of technology <clears throat> in terms of premium. It's constantly changing in terms of Wi-Fi and electronics and, you know, how to uh, emphasize the game. And so we have a lot of decisions to make. And uh, I can assure you that we're going to be really try to be as thoughtful as we can about it. And, of course, we're going to, look at everything that's out there with a new coach new gm new quarterback this season going into 2024 yeah. what are your expectations and what does a successful season look like yeah so i'm focused on our long-term goals which is i want to be elite and uh playing deep into the playoffs or competing for super bowls season in and season out and um you know, I'm focused on building, uh, and and I think this will be a better season than last year across the board. I think we're going to be, you know, obviously the identity that Dan and Adam have been talking about, you know, of um, you know the team uh, is front and center in terms of us being competitive, of uh, being uh, you know punishing, of competing at the end, and obviously, you know, obviously we, we the record was dismal last year, and we we better do better than that. Um, but like really, uh, um, I think this is going to be a way better season for all of those things. And a lot of the intangibles, Jaden, uh, continuing de developing, hopefully into what we think and all hope that, and know that he can be. And so, um, a lot of intangibles and then you're going to, you should see improvement uh, across the board on everything. Uh, whether that I, I've learned a long time ago in sports, not to make like bold predictions. So I will not. Uh, this is sports, uh, and um, I'll leave that to uh, the uh, the betters in Vegas and other things. The people who are may better at making predictions than I am, but uh, you know, for sure, we're all going to have a, a much funner time. Hey Josh, um, <clears throat> at your with your other teams, you all were able to eventually acquire a difference maker, a significant difference maker. How does that buy a franchise time to kind of fill out the rest of the roster, the rest of the team, <clears throat> even if you struggle in year one or year two? Yeah, look, I think when you have a difference maker, um, ultimately um, you're going to see improvement in the team. And um, obviously, I mean, each sport's different. Um, certainly, um, you know, in the other sports, um, you know, there's only so – there's only so – if you have a league MVP on your roster, you're not, you're going to be pretty good, you know? Uh, so I think that, um, you know, in the, in the case of some of the other franchises, we're really now at the point where we're trying to win championships. Uh, and it's not our regular season is um, less important for us. I think here we're a little earlier than that, but I think certainly if Jaden turns into, you know, what we all think he can be, I mean, that is the key position in the NFL. And obviously, um, he'll move us forward. And, and what if you're, have you seen him in your interactions with him during OTAs, during camp, and during this spring and summer? Yeah, he's, he's great. I mean, he is uh, down to earth, humble, um, committed, um, 
a, you know, very genuine, um, show, easy to be around. I mean, I really can't say enough good things about Jaden. And even with, I mean, obviously, um, and sort of, I think, works well with his teammates, um, you know, with me, with Dan, and just has an easy way about him and uh, really, uh, really uh, communicates with everyone. So I think that uh, he's he seems unique and, um, you know, all, any, anyone, all, all these difference makers, I mean, and you asked me about others, but it's like they're unique, right? They're ends of one. And, um, you know, I'm hoping that, I mean, Jaden has a lot of potential to be one of those. Uh, you guys have expressed interest in hosting a future NFL draft here in D.C. I'm just wondering what your vision for that would be and what that could do for, for football and for the team. Yeah, I think we're going to get that done. I mean, we're talking to the league about it. Uh, it's a question of timing, and it's going to be a few years off. They plan away in advance. And, I mean, listen, think about the idea of having – and I'm not breaking news here because we're going – it's not done yet, but think about a draft on the mall or whatever and how exciting that would be for the city of Washington, for the NFL. So everyone sees that. And uh, and so obviously there's a lot of complexity to it with, uh, you know, the park service. And now I'm lifting the covers a little, but, uh, you know, there's things that need to get done. But I think that um, I, I believe that it will happen, and uh, it's a question of when. Um, and so, yeah, it'll be great. I mean, it'd be super fun to do that here, and I think great for the country as well, and great for the NFL. And then training camp is the other one. Some teams take it on the road, some teams don't. What have your interactions been like with Dan? Has he expressed a preference, and do you have one? Yeah, look, I, I think that um, Dan's preference, I think, is to be away from where the, um, you know, the main training, away from the training ground, get away come together uh and so i think uh as you're aware there's some things that we're working on but i think that uh you can do that in lots of different ways you can do it at a permanent home you can do that on a season in season out basis um and so uh we have some options but um i think that's his preference and makes sense to me josh as an owner do you operate differently sport to sport like an executive obviously would build a roster differently <coughs> But depending on the sport, do you find yourself acting that way with hockey, basketball, football? Yeah, so um, I'm pretty focused on um, the commanders and the NBA, and I have partners that I work with on the other sports. Um, and, look, I think the fundamentals are the same, which is you hire the best talent. Uh, you hire the best coach, the best GM, uh, and they hire coaches underneath them, and then uh, you, you hold them accountable. You ask lots of questions. You make sure you're super knowledgeable and they're communicating with you, but then you let them do their jobs, right? And so I, you know, my my approach as an owner is to do do it that way. I don't want to be, you know, kind of controlling, you know, you know, roster decisions. You know, I mean, obviously, if I think something, you know, my job is to keep it, you know, on the road, right? Like if I think someone's doing something that really doesn't make sense, I'm not going to do it. But by and large, you know, that's their job. And just because... You know, I was, I was, I'm a great business person. I built, uh, you know, a big company. Doesn't mean that I'm going to be better than Adam Peters. Peters at picking a roster, right? So I defer, but hold people accountable for their decisions. And you know, obviously, and so I think that that really is the same across sports. I mean, obviously, the nuances between there's lots of nuances between the different sports. Uh, there's different CBAs, different. You know, sports have hard caps, not hard caps. Uh, you know, certainly the number of players in the NBA is much smaller. Uh, and there, there's lots of nuances we go into, but by and large, um, that sort of approach is, is what I follow across sports. And you've made it pretty clear throughout that the name's not a priority right now. Is there any research that you have being done to see if the name is resonating with fans more than it was initially, or is that something that matters to you at all if it is growing no, in popularity? It, it does matter. I just think that, um, and and certainly, um, like, we've been very clear. We can't, for obvious reasons, the old name can't come back. But um, right now, we're focused on things that unify the team around uh, our football team, right, and unify the city around our football team. And so you know, the first objective is we got to start winning football games. Um, and we need everyone supporting the team and not things that might, you know, drive people apart. Um, secondly, um, obviously, you know, we're trying to find a new home. And again, 
uh, unifying the city uh, around that uh, is important. And so, and, you know, the name is one of those things that like, a lot of opinions. But, I mean, I can't say, I've, I've certainly not forgot about it. I mean, like I said, I grew up here, okay, so I understand it. And, you know, we brought back, we're going to start to do things that bring us back to our heritage, uh, honoring our past. You know, the gold, you saw the gold uh, pants. Um, those are easy things to do. So uh, we are doing research um, and we're thinking about it. But like right now, we're, we're prioritizing the things that we've talked about. And, and, and that's kind of the rationale for it. Hey, Josh, uh, having grown up here, you, you, know, you talked about going to games and you know, watching this team your whole life. This fan base, people could say, has maybe kind of been asleep or, or just not as present the last <coughs> 20 years. Do, do you feel a sense where you can feel like that fan base is waking up just with the changes you guys have made and the new leadership and Jaden and everything? Totally. I mean, first of all, thank you to the fans. I mean, we're um, you know way ahead of uh, – I think we've sold more tickets since, than, all, every, uh, you know, than we had all last year today. Um, and, and I've, I've now, I've been out in the community a lot and I've, you know, been speaking to people and, um, literally people cry when they talk about Washington football and the memories that they had. And so, uh, it's still there. It was like a little bit, uh, sleeping, a little bit dormant. And, you know, there's so many stories that I get, uh, told or texted about or any number of ways communicated to where, okay, I just spoke to my neighbor and. They just bought season tickets again because they like what you all are doing, and so that that's that's across the DMV. And so, our job is to keep delivering for the fan base, keep creating that excitement, keep doing things uh, in a first class way, keep inviting people in to help us uh, make this happen uh, for the DMV, and obviously supporting the players, supporting the football team. So I do, I do think it's coming back, and um, you know, I do think that uh, it never went away, but it got lost for a little while. Josh, we just had the opportunity to take this tour, and much of the renovations are absolutely <coughs> beautiful, some of them breathtaking. Also, the access for the fans are a lot easier in some spaces as well. You talked earlier about this being like someone coming into your home. What do you hope that fans feel when they walk into Commander's Field? Yeah, so I just hope they feel comfortable. So um, what I say to our staff is that, um, you know, everyone can affect how a fan feels when they come here, right? So if uh, the parking uh, person yells at you or if your food is cold or um, if uh, someone is surly or the elevator doesn't work, um, all these things affect fan experience. And so... Um, I want people to feel comfortable here, uh, to feel, and I think importantly to feel part of a community. We're all, like we're all part of a community. That we're we're the community that wants the commanders to win. Like when, when the commanders are successful on the field, like you know we're the the people that are at the stadium and the people that are watching on TV, the DMV at large. We're all coming together, and so that that's what sports does. And so. Um, all those things are part of it, and uh, I also want, uh, you know, I hate to, I want feedback. Just keep, keep, I know you've been telling us what you want, but keep, keep talking to us, and we're listening.